Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be talking about the various reasons for obeying God, but a number of those reasons have to do with God's will, so we first need to understand just what we mean when we say the will of God. Let's start by looking at the human will, how it works, and how many types of wills we have, then see whether the same can be said about God's will. Now we talked a little bit about the will in episode 4. The will is the highest part of you. It's the part of you that chooses whether to accept information from your mind or from your feelings. In other words, your will is the part of you that's really in control of what choices you make. The more self-control you have, the more your will is able to control your choices. Now for a few more deductions. As we said in episode 19, God is the perfect example of goodness. And as we said in episode 38, self-control is a good thing. Therefore, God is the perfect example of self-control. Because his self-control is limitless, his will has absolute sway over his actions, regardless of what else he may know or feel. Because of this, we know that God can't be tempted, either by knowledge or by emotions, to do anything that's against his will. And because God can't make contradictions work, he can't will anything that's against his will, because that would be a contradiction. So the question becomes, how is it that things happen which go against the will of God? The answer is that clearly nothing ever happens which goes against God's will. But what about evil? Doesn't evil go against God's will? Well, not exactly. As I've been saying, the will just means the things that you decide to do, or what you decide to make happen. However, when we talk about evil being against God's will, what we really mean is that evil is against what God wants. This is an important distinction to make, because the difference between a desire and a will can be pretty big. A desire is your intended end goal, while your will is simply what course of action you decide on. Now, you might say, that's all well and good, but if I had God's power, I'd be able to make all my desires come true in an instant, so my will and my desires would be the same. However, the problem with this is that it assumes that God can do anything you can imagine. Again, as we proved in episode 34, God's power doesn't enable him to do certain things, like sin, or break his word, or defy his nature, or more importantly, make contradictions work. God is loving, so his desire is for everyone to love him back, since that's the best thing for us. However, as we proved in episode 31, this involves giving people the freedom to not love him, which makes it possible for people to choose to avoid doing what he wants them to do. The only way to get around this would be to force them to choose to love him. But it's impossible to force someone to freely choose anything, because that's a contradiction, and God can't make contradictions work. The very fact that a choice is made freely implies that the person making the choice wasn't forced into it. So we're left with this picture of the will of God. God's desire is for good to always be done, and for everyone to love him. Because of this desire, his will is to allow evil to occur, so that the choice to freely love him can also occur. After all, he can always just erase the evil once his work is finished, right? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.